Hi everyone, Mike here, K8MRD Radio Stuff. Uh, today just got the uh, TYT TH8600, the little tiny dual band VHF UHF, uh, 25 watt waterproof submersible uh, radio. So we're going to try that out. I'm uh, going to unbox it and get it on the air, see what uh, the menus are like and all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned. Okay, let's see what's inside. Got TYT user's manual. Probably the uh, same Chinese to English conversion we're all used to from these Chinese radios, but we may or may not need that, who knows. Got the programming cable with it and disc that will uh, most likely get immediately thrown away as my Mac does not have a drive. They're kind of obsolete. <clears throat> Get the, uh, well, it's been verified. Yep. <laughs> Gotta have the certificate of authenticity there. Uh, this would be the power cable. And one thing to note, I watched uh, Ham Radio 2.0's video on this. Um, I think his is a couple years old. It's uh, April 16th, 2018 when I'm making this. And he noticed that this cable, the black and the red, were backwards. And it appears they have fixed that. Let's see if I can get the light in there. That little nub right there uh, gets connected like such. So you've got your watertight seal there. So that's good to know. Um, we'll put our Anderson power poles on here uh, before we fire it up for the testing. Got your mounting bracket here. microphone, standard DTMF microphone here, buttons and such, nice little, let's see, five, six pin microphone connector there, I wonder if it actually has a gasket in there, it does, to keep it watertight as this, you should theoretically be able to submerge, submerge this radio in water, um, so that would be cool. Got your standard parts bag with your mic, uh, whoops, turn the repeater down there, your mic clip and miscellaneous fodder, so that's good to have. And then lastly, the actual radio itself. This thing is a lot smaller than, uh, than I remember. Take it out here. Um, fits in the palm of my hand. Let me grab a, I'll grab a, I'll grab a Bofang for comparison here. Uh, here's a, this is a UV5R, let me take this lung antenna off, this is a UV5R, that's it, so basically two Bofangs, big, and you're supposed to get 20, <clears throat> excuse me, 20 and 25 watts out of this thing, so... Pretty nice though, this is all metal. It, it has some weight to it, a fan. Uh, this right here, turn it around. I wonder if this light is worth it, nope. Um, this keeps everything watertight. Your phones, you know, for an external speaker, headphones or whatever, and then your USB programming cable gets plugged into there. Um, I'm pretty impressed. I was actually looking at the uh, the QYT KT8900D versus this because I wanted that quad watch function, but the reviews just weren't enough to entice me. So I ended up going with this. I paid under $100 for it. Um, so pretty awesome so far. And the fact that it's waterproof, you know, I, I have, if you guys watched my Bofang Go Box video, um, this is small enough to actually fit into that if I if I take some of the uh, foam out and you know I don't need four bowfangs in a box I could actually fit this and the battery and a spare bowfang and a charger and all that stuff in that box which I may end up doing with this so this is a neat radio man this is cool so um, I'm gonna do some uh, wiring real quick I'm gonna put the Anderson power poles on here and get her fired up. I may actually just plug it into the battery 
and uh, we'll turn it on and see what we can get. It's time to get our crimp on. Here we got the power pole connector there. Crimpers, gotta have those. And this just fits right in that little 30 amp slot there. If I can get it. Uh, how does that go? Yes, like that. In and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze your way to firmer hips and thighs. That's one. Let's see if we can reproduce our results. Tweak this wire a little bit. I had to trim the wire just a touch. Squeeze that back in there. And then we'll take this other guy here, see? Like such. Get it nice and perfect. And here again, and that's all there is to it. Crimping is awesome. And then, if we didn't screw it up, we should be able to fit the red, whoops, in the red. That's the click of success right there and the black, and the black, like that. Power poles are the best things in the world. Okay, so I got the power poles hooked up. Uh, I did cheat and turn it on. <clears throat> I programmed a couple uh, repeaters in here, and it was not too hard. I did not need the manual to do it, so that was pretty cool, so let's turn this on. These buttons, by the way, are really tiny. I have stupid fat little Tootsie Roll fingers. So it's not very easy for me, but a lot of the stuff you can do on the on the microphone, by the way, which is, let me show you real quick. That's the microphone. It's a pretty beefy microphone. Um, they're IP67. Um, it's got a good weight to it. Um, so let's see how it sounds. Let's see if we can get one of these. Uh, let me get off. There may or may not be a net on this repeater, the 8.4 repeater. <clears throat> it's having some problems, so I'm going to get off of that and just get to some random frequency that hopefully no one's on. And then this is the South Lion repeater. Uh, so let's see if we can check in and see how this thing sounds. K8 MRD testing. Got good volume. It's on, uh, you can't really see the screen. The backlight, I, I can't figure out how to turn the backlight down to get a better uh, view from the screen, but <clears throat> it's on high power. You can see the little H there, and there's a W next to the H. Uh, for wide and then the T is for the tone and you can see the little plus there for the offset um, let's, go, let's play with the menus here so all of this stuff you can do here that's that's quality video making right there if you hit this menu button you'll go to the menu you can go up and down uh, hit menu again it'll bring you into the radio settings or radio info I wonder what that is Oh, uh, that's just showing the firmware version, okay. And then the top VFO button right here, that's the back button, oddly enough. Um, and these these numbers, these are weird. They sh they're backwards. This should be up and this should be down, I feel. But they're not, so that'll take some getting used to. But whatever, it is what it is. Um, function, you can... So these, if you hit function, you can't, I don't know if you can see, if you watch the L, you hit function eight and that changes the power. So you got high, mid, and low. So that's pretty neat. Function one is scan. Pretty slow scan. Hit function again, let's see. Oh, I'm in VFO. I wanna go to memory. Is that the repeater I want to be on? I think so. No. 
Maybe I didn't, uh, maybe I didn't program that repeater in for 7240. That I don't think is the repeater. Maybe it is. I don't know. But that was the South Lion repeater, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat radio. I wish someone would come back to me. Let me make sure I got this program. We'll see if someone gets someone on the air here so you can see what it sounds like. All right, kids. So we're back here at Bloomer Park. I've got uh, a couple things. I've got the TYT 8600. And I just purchased yesterday, Mother's Day, at Harbor Freight. Because what says Mother's Day like a sale at Harbor Freight? Uh, I got the 13 watt solar briefcase and the solar charger regulator. So I got that all hooked up. <clears throat> and I'm going to throw my J pole up in the tree. We'll see if we can make a contact on one of the repeaters and uh, see how this all works together. I'm going to, which means I'm going to have to make another go box. I'm going to have to make a a little go box for this THT so I'll throw the camera on the tripod tripod and uh, we'll get at it That's what the solar panel looks like. It's like a briefcase that folds up. Pretty neat. It's I, I plugged it in for a couple minutes and it's definitely charging the battery. So I'll actually show you that. This thing seems to be kicking butt and taking names. 13.4 volts charging. This was at 12.8. A few minutes ago I was out in my yard just kind of messing around working pretty good. I'm shocked. It's from Harbor Freight. Let's plug this baby in. Let's see what we can get. Yeah, I hear people. K8MRD. Anyone around for a quick signal check? Okay, uh, yeah, K, uh, what is it, KE8ITV, I think we've spoken before. The name is Mike, the call is Kilo 8 Mike Romeo Delta. I'm just testing a couple things, making a video for my YouTube channel. I just got the, the, the Harbor Freight solar briefcase uh, running into my 8 amp hour battery and I'm using the TYT TH8600 radio and a roll up J-pole that's about 10 feet off the ground in a tree. Can I be on YouTube? N-H-C-A-L. <laughs> no, Chris, I think you're banned. <laughs> How are you? Oh, not too bad. Uh, good afternoon there, Mike. Tom, good to hear you. I couldn't resist. Just the radio there. Uh, QTH and heading home. Uh, Tom, go ahead and pick it up. I believe you said your, your name was Mike. Uh, hey, 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 Chris, what's going on? Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry, you, you started to talk, and I, I got this TYT radio, and next thing you know, I was over at, on the Novi repeater, so <laughs> I apologize. I didn't get most of what you said um, due to me being on another repeater. So, uh, anyways, but I don't, I, I did hear you say how you're putting, you're mocking up a radio on a J-pole and down on it does sound good, like I said, over here, over here in Westland. And this is uh, K8ITV, Tom, over to, I believe it's Mike. 
Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm using this roll-up J-Pole. I never use it, and I'm, I'm getting like zero to one bars, so uh, hopefully I'm making it out. I'm not that far. I'm, I'm out in Bloomer Park on uh, at like Haggerty and Richardson area, so I'm probably 10, 11 miles from the repeater as the crow flies. But yeah, I'm running battery power uh, with a TYT8600 and uh, a Harbor Freight, the 13-watt solar briefcase, just, just trying this stuff out for, uh, for a YouTube video. Okay, cool. I'm curious to uh, watch this video. I'm curious to see how you hear how you like that for briefcase deal. Uh, just to get, just so you know, you got about noise on your signal that Tom does there, Mike. So uh, just to give you an idea, uh, Tom. Okay. Yeah, good deal. So yeah, I'm kind of curious to know how that thing works. Uh, myself. Um, so yeah, good deal. Yeah, it sounds good over here. So over to you uh, from TV. Well, I'll tell you what, I was messing around with it earlier. I just got it yesterday and, and I was uh, not even planning on bringing it out today, but because it was calling for rain all day and then the sun came out, so I thought I'd screw around with it. When I first came out, this battery had uh, like 12.8 volts um, and after charging for a few minutes, it was up to like 13.4. So it's, it's doing its work. I put it on a, um, a, a watt meter, um, and, or a multimeter rather, and it was putting out like 14, uh, about 14 and a half volts, uh, when the sun was hitting it. So it's, it's got a little bit of promise. I got it hooked up to the, like the $25 100 watt solar charge regulator. Uh, and it seems to be doing the trick, so hopefully it'll work for my HF rig, too. Okay, very cool. That is, uh, that's definitely, uh, good to know. Yeah, because I know a lot of, uh, a lot of the guys carry those roll-up solar mats, uh, a little bigger. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the wattage is or the output is on them, but, uh, I'm sure you've seen those. Mike, uh, WMSC, he, he has one. It's basically like a beach. Uh, about the size of a beach towel. It, un it unrolls, you know, rolls up with some Velcro and kind of small, about the size of a, uh, oh, I don't know, a coffee uh, thermos, you know, and then uh, rolls out to about the size of a big beach towel, and it's got all those solar panels on there, but I'm sure that one's probably quite a bit more pricey than the Harbor Freight model. Uh, Tom? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, it's pretty nice to be able to go out in a park and, and throw an antenna in a tree and, and work uh, some portable ham radio. Uh, I, I made a video last week, I think it was last week or two weeks ago. No, it was last week. Well, actually the last two weeks. Uh, I've, I've got a couple of videos of me doing some HF stuff out in the park. I finally got my go box made up and I've got it to the point where literally everything I need is in the go box from antenna to stakes to microphones everything you name it so um you just type if you just type in my call sign in youtube it'll it'll come up um i, I have a, quite a few videos now but this will be the next one i don't know if i'll have this one up tonight but there's a bit of editing and stuff but um yeah chris i think uh mike's probably got that uh power film stuff that's that stuff is awesome but it is ridiculously expensive it's like 350 bucks just for a 30 watt something or other and you see these guys with 120 watts those are about 1500 so yeah i, I think i'm gonna stick with my uh harbor freight one for now but i i just can't justify spending that much money but you never know i, I plan on doing some parks on the air stuff so if i end up needing something like that that might be something to save for for sure go ahead chris Yeah, I'm not uh, quite sure what happened on that last transmission, but the uh, noise got the best. I only got about 25% of that there. Uh, but, uh, 
yeah, those uh, those uh, eco cells are ridiculously expensive, and uh, they've found some alternatives uh, which are a lot cheaper. And they're they've been uh, in like Air, I know Eric K D R S. He went ahead and purchased the cells and put them back together, and it was a lot, lot, lot cheaper for a lot bigger cell. So that's another option there. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, I saw that video you. Uh, you put together where you and Jason went out to the park. That was pretty uh, cool. <laughs> and I saw the one where you got your FD, uh, your 891, and <laughs> your first contact was the ARRL. That was kind of cool too. So, but uh, yeah, something happened on your last transmission. The noise got the better of you there. So, uh, uh, Tom K8 ITV, go ahead and pick it up at HCAL. <laughs> All right, seven three, Tom. Hey, Chris, I'm gonna sign. I I, I don't think this antenna is working very well, like it should. It's it's probably 15 feet up in the tree, maybe. Yeah, maybe not quite that much. And I don't know what the deal is, but hey, thanks for coming back. Thanks for watching the videos. I'll let you know when this one's up. Uh, I can't remember your call. NHCAL K8 MRD. I'll be clear. All right, seventy three, Mike. Yeah, you're uh, you're real good in the very beginning. You said you're gonna go ahead and call it, and then. Uh... And then you got noisy, and then you said you'll let me know when you put the next video up. So, yeah, it's kind of going in and out. So I don't know if it's uh, the antenna or a loose connection or what, but uh, it, it's kind of working. It's almost there. So 73, good hearing from you. We'll uh, catch you down the log. NHCAL is uh, standing by. All right, well, other than the antenna issue, it seems to be working. We're at 13.01 volts on the uh, PowerWorks uh, watt meter. This thing's working surprisingly well. For, you know, I got it was 25% off for Mother's Day, even though I'm not a mother. I don't plan on being one. Uh, <laughs> it works. So, and the, the TYT radio. Uh, is a nice little I'm gonna get probably one of those smaller the smaller one of these like that I have for the Bofang go box and uh, probably just make a little go box out of this maybe with like a 5 amp hour battery or something so it's a little bit smaller or I might take this 8 amp hour battery and put it in that because I still do want to get that Dakota lithium uh, 10 amp hour life po 4 whatever it is and if you use the Hashnasi code i guess when you're checking out you save five bucks so that's pretty neat uh so anyway hey thanks for watching and uh seven three we'll talk to you later